Longtime Fax First subscribers are likely familiar with actor and director L.Q. Jones. Sadly, we've just learned the legendary Western star has passed away. Just a month shy of his 95th birthday, on July 9, 2022, Jones passed away of natural causes at his home in the Hollywood Hills. Join Facts First as we take a look back on Jones's prolific Hollywood career and how he came to be known as one of the most iconic Western stars of the 20th century. L.Q. Jones' Early Years and Rise to Fame Jones was born Justice Ellis McQueen on August 19, 1927, in Beaumont, Texas, to parents Jesse Perley and Justice Ellis McQueen Sr. His father was a railroad worker, while his mother tragically died in a car accident when he was still young. As a kid, McQueen's family moved around quite a bit. From Beaumont, they moved to Dallas, then to Oklahoma, before returning to Beaumont once again. By the time he was eight, he already had his own horse. He grew up around what he would later refer to as tough rodeo people. His uncle was into roping, and ranch work was just a way of life. So later, when he got into westerns, it just sort of came naturally. After graduating high school in 1945, he served in the Navy from 1945 to 46. He then enrolled at Lamar Junior College in Beaumont before transferring to Lon Morris College in Jacksonville, Texas. After that, he studied journalism, law, and business at the University of Texas at Austin from 1950 to 51. McQueen tried out several different career paths before finally discovering his passion for acting. First, he took a stab as a stand-up comic before briefly playing pro baseball and football. He even did a stint as a rancher in Nicaragua before giving acting a go upon the insistence of one of his former college roommates, Fess Parker. Fess was known for his titular roles in Disney's Davy Crockett and Daniel Boone television series. Parker sent McQueen a copy of the book Battle Cry, informing him it was likely to get the motion picture treatment. McQueen thought he'd be well suited to play the part of the character L.Q. Jones in the film adaptation of the novel. Through sheer luck, circumstance, and confidence, director Raoul Walsh took a liking to young McQueen and gave him a chance to play Jones in the film. Battle Cry hit theaters in 1955, and from that point on, the name L.Q. Jones seemed to stick. Years later, when asked about the name change, Jones explained that before appearing in Battle Cry, he had never seen a motion picture camera. After signing on to do the film, the studio asked him if he minded if they changed his name. He reportedly replied by saying since they were the ones who signed the checks, it didn't matter to him in the least what they called him. That being said, he would eventually admit that changing his name from Justice McQueen was probably not the brightest move. Later in 1955, he was cast as Smithy Smith in three episodes of ABC's Cheyenne, his first hour-long network TV western role. For the next couple decades, he appeared in dozens of films and TV shows, many of which were westerns. Starting with his role in the Klondike series, in 1960, Jones became a member of Sam Peckinpah's stock company of actors. He went on to appear in many of Peckinpah's other western films, including 1965's Major Dundee and 1970's Ballad of Cable Hogue. Jones was often cast alongside his friend Struther Martin. Perhaps the most memorable instance was his role as the bounty hunter and posse member TC in 1969's The Wild Bunch. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Jones's Onset Spat with Sam Peckinpah While filming Major Dundee, Jones got into a heated exchange of words with Sam Peckinpah while filming a scene that saw him and his co-stars Ben Johnson and Warren Oates chasing a band of Indians on horseback up a river. Sam had a nine-foot tower built on rails that went over the river to follow the actors while filming the scene. At the end of the take, Sam yelled at the three actors, saying they had no talent and they'd never work in motion pictures again. While Oates and Johnson let the comment slide and returned to work, Jones couldn't let it go. Instead, he came storming up to the tower, stood up in his saddle, climbed the building, and told Peckinpah off by saying he didn't have enough talent to direct him in the men's room. Suddenly, everyone went quiet. You probably could have heard a pin drop. The cast and crew surely expected Jones was about to be fired, but instead, Sam giggled, and with that, everything was okay. Jones later remarked, saying Sam probably would have had a few choice words for God himself if he showed up on set. If anything, he had more respect for Jones after speaking his mind like that. Jones's film and TV career was quite prolific. In addition to the Peck and Paw films, Jones appeared in recurring roles in series like Gunsmoke, Laramie, Two Faces West, and The Virginian. In 1962, he notably appeared as a wealthy rancher in search of a bride named Ollie Earnshaw on Lawman in an episode fittingly titled The Bride. 
Many will remember Jones for his role in the military drama series Men of Annapolis, while others might recall his appearance in the NBC Western series Jefferson Drum. He made two guest appearances on the courtroom drama series Perry Mason. Other notable TV shows he guest starred on include The A-Team, Hawaii Five-0, The Fall Guy, and The Men from Shiloh. His other notable film roles include parts in Men in War, The Naked and the Dead, Cimarron, Hang 'em High, and McQuaid. In 1985, he played Pat Webb in Casino. He followed that up with roles in Lightning Jack, Tornado, Zorro, and Route 666. His final film role was in 2006's Prairie Home Companion. Jones appeared alongside numerous legends, including Elvis. Throughout his career, Jones starred in many films alongside some of the biggest names in showbiz, including stars like James Coburn, Steve McQueen, Audie Murphy, and Clint Eastwood. He even got the opportunity to appear in three Elvis films. The first was when he was just getting started as an actor, and he appeared in Elvis's first movie, Love Me Tender, in 1956. His next film with The King was 1960's Flaming Star, and his third and final film was 1968's Stay Away Joe. In one interview, Jones explained that while it was hard to be around Elvis, since doing so put you around his legion of teenage fans, when they did have some time to just hang, they would hang out at his or Elvis's apartment. The two stars would sit around and shoot the breeze. In these conversations, Jones learned that Elvis didn't think of himself as a very good singer. Instead, he thought he was a better guitarist. Jones begged to differ, but that didn't matter because they had a blast hanging out while Elvis would play the guitar and everyone else would sing along. Jones is survived by his three children. Jones's funeral arrangements have yet to be announced. He's survived by his three kids, Randy, Steve, and Mindy. He had been single for the last 49 years. His ex-wife, Netta Sue Lewis, whom he met in college, he married his ex-wife after dating for nine years in 1950. They divorced in 1973. She was the mother of his three children. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of LQ Jones? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the Join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Faxverse or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99.